Well, good morning. It's it's great to be in the house of the Lord as we as we look to, to God's word and see what He's speaking to us, saying to us today. Uh, my message is how Christians are to serve others, and uh, we need to redirect our culture away from ourselves uh, and move into the needs of others and the glory of God. Culture must not be used merely for self-interest. The readings that we've heard uh, this morning from Deuteronomy 15, uh, verses 1 through 11, and Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37, uh, talk about how the Christian community is supposed to act. The events of the readings from, from Acts takes place immediately after the coming of the Holy Spirit. The people had an uncommon experience of, of the life and death of Jesus, and they, they met to talk about what all these events meant. As they witnessed to each other, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit came onto them and sent them out to witness before the world. And the witnessing included serving the poor just like Jesus did. It became the mission of the, of the early church. The power of the resurrection commanded uh, such a consuming loyalty uh, that people gave everything they had to the church and its mission, and thereby welding their future to that of the church. Now, we know that from the reading that uh, both Moses and Jesus told us that the poor will always be with us. Consequently, we must always be generous as children of the one true God who loves to provide everything we need, the Lord encourages us to give generously to the poor. He blesses us so that we can bless others. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 11, Moses taught that, that helping the poor is, uh, is an issue of the heart. Uh, in Moses' mind, an open heart led to an open hand. Uh, Jesus also stated that uh, wherever our treasures are, there our hearts will be. Moses stated that because the poor will always be with us, they will always need help from the wealthy and the needs of the poor are to met, be met gladly and generously. Now that didn't mean there would be free handouts to anyone who wanted them. Uh, I, I, I get almost angry when I come up to a corner and I, I see someone standing there with, a, uh, with a, uh, a sign for help. And I would like to direct them to, to another sign that says help wanted. They're all over. These people could do well to, to get out and, and do something other than stand on the corner. The poor back then, as with now, should always have to work for their keep. In this way, people keep a, a sense of dignity and, and it keeps their, their work habits intact. The law requiring landowners uh, not to harvest all of their grain, uh, to leave grain in the, in the corners, uh, uh, and, uh, and grapes on the, on the, on the, on the vines. Uh, but they didn't hand it out to them. They had to go out and they had to glean it. They had to get it from the fields and, uh, and so it, it, it came to be honest labor uh, to, to provide for their needs. The covenant laws back then were so extensive that obedience to them would eventually uh, root out all poverty. Uh, I wonder what it would be like if our society followed those kind of laws. Wouldn't other nations look on us and, and uh, think that our, our way of uh, ordering society was best? 
Justice is seen in, in, in the way a nation treats its weakest members. Think how an attitude like this would impact our churches. Infighting would stop, uh, rumors would end, visions would move from, from paper to, to practice, needs would be met, spiritual gifts would be exercised, uh, our communities would see that God is doing powerful work among his people. As we read in, in Old Testament times, every seventh year would be a jubilee year. Uh, and during that, that time, all debts would be forgiven. Servants were, were to be set free and, uh, and fields were to be left unplanted. It was assumed that debtors were, were poor Israelites and, and <clears throat> borrowed money to feed their families. Jubilee years proclaimed grace. The Israelites... Uh, had the view that the, that the poor were to be given uh, whatever they needed. Even though such loans uh, would never need to be paid back. Their attitude was one of warmth and generosity. Especially with the realization that there would always be poor people in Israel. So do we have a similar attitude today? When we look at the poor, are we looking at them through God's eyes? And when do those who have plenty make sacrifices that really cost something? Moses told the people to open their hands wide to the poor. And really, God expects us to do the same. And when we do, God will bless us. If we give merely to, to, to get a blessing, uh, that's the wrong motive. We give in order to be a blessing, not to get one. And if we are a blessing to others, then God will bless us. You know, a closed hand is a grasping hand or a fist. It represents an attitude of uh, calculation. The wealthy in Israel we're, we're not to hold back on lending to the poor, especially as the, the jubilee year drew near. Instead, they were to give generously, and then they would honor God and be blessed. An open hand, an open hand is an offering hand. That's why we shake with an open hand, says welcome. Let's go of hostilities and is open to receiving what other people offer. We receive with open hands from our creator and sustainer, and we openly offer to others what we have received. These people that were, were there when, when these words were spoken in Acts is a good example of what Christian community should be. They shared what they had and they're thereby following the old saying, from each according to his ability and to each according to his need. We're called to minister to the needy because when we look at the needy, we should be seeing the face of God. The gospel is for needy people, people like us, because we're all needy people. We're all needy in some form or another. We look at people who, who seem calm and collected on the outside, but if we look deeper, we see marriages that are in trouble, parents concerned about rebellious children, or people who are lonely or hurting. Christ died to serve the needy, and he calls on all of us to serve the needy as well. We are the eyes, the ears, and the hands and feet of Christ to the world. We have to find the needy souls and show them Christ's love. The Christian ideal of, of serving the needy uh, 
really conflicts with today's reality. In our modern uh, uh, financially blessed culture, so many people are living in, in financial and spiritual poverty. It affects their families, their relationships, and their service to God. Concern for the poor conflicts with our modern get-rich-quick-at-all-costs world. I hate to say that's what our world is, but that's where we're at. Our world places some people above others. The Christian ideal, though, is to treat everyone equally. Christians lead by example, not by lording over others. We serve others. Others do not serve us. Like the Booth brothers sing, every once in a while we have to get our hands dirty. It'll be hard for us to, to share what we have, but call, God calls on each one of us to share what we have. Because you know what? Whatever we have already belongs to God. He lends us what we have so that we can use these things to do his work in the world. To, to get far in God's service, we need God's grace. I remember hearing the, the story of the, of the young boy who stared intently into the windows of a, of a beautiful Cadillac car. The owner wondered about this, this boy. So he put his hands on the boy's shoulders and, and asked him what he was doing. The boy said he was interested in, in cars and, and read a lot about different models. The owner talked with the boy for a while and explained to him uh, the de details about this particular car, the, this model. After a while, the boy asked, he said, mister, how much did you pay for this car? And the man replied, nothing. He said, my brother gave it to me. And the boy responded, I wish. And then he stopped without finishing. And the man chuckled. You were going to say that uh, I wish I had a brother like that. The boy replied, no, I was going to say, I wished I could be a brother like that. You see, sir, I have a brother who is crippled, and I'd like to do a lot of things for him. Instead, I think so many are like the famous uh, uh, miser uh, who was called by the chairperson of the community uh, charity. Sir, the fundraiser said, uh, our records show that despite your wealth, you've never once given to our drive. And the tightwad replied, do your records show that I have an elderly mother who was left penniless when my father died? Do your records show that I have a disabled brother who is unable to work? Do your records show that I have a, a widowed sister with small children who can barely make ends meet? No, sir, the fundraiser said. Our records don't show any of those things. Well, I don't give to any of them, so why should I give anything to you? <laughs> Where are our hearts? Are they with the boy or are they with the miser? We need to redirect our, our culture away from ourselves to the needs of others and to the glory of God. Culture must not be used merely for self-interest. The early Christians understood this. Uh, they realized that their, their possessions were not to be held on to. They gave up their goods as needed to meet the needs of the, of the community as a whole. The cultural resources at their disposal became powerful tools for expressing God's love among them and the surrounding community. 
really, they showed us the way. They showed us how to treat others and to love God. I just have one, one thought, one question. Are we prepared to follow their example? Father, thank you for this word this morning. It's uh, a little different, uh, but maybe uh, it'll touch some heartstrings. Uh, Lord, we're, we're right on the, on the throes of, of Thanksgiving, a, a time that we should uh, be giving thanks for all that we have and thinking about others around us. So bless us this morning. Thank you for, for giving us this word in Jesus' name. Amen.